Go ahead and open your Bibles. Tonight we're going to talk about, um, th there is a misnomer, and even sometimes in the charismatic arena or word of faith arenas, we've, we've mispresented some things. Um, you know, we, we, we scriptures and Jesus healed them all. And, you know, Jesus said um, in Mark 16, go lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Um, yet we have to understand Jesus made that statement, Mark 16, in light of the parameter uh, of people who had experienced or been with his ministry. So they saw people that he went by that were sick, he didn't heal. Now those he ministered to got healed. In most cases, uh, almost all cases. Uh, we'll read one tonight where people didn't get anything. Um, so there, there is a parameter to this. Okay, and we want to talk about that tonight so that we, because I think we bring confusion. Uh, I, and this it kind of sparked me recently. I was talking to someone, um, and they said, you know, a number of years ago, they got really turned on to the Lord and got kind of turned on to healing and watching, you know, stuff on television. They were just really all excited. And, um, and then they, they had an opportunity, a, a teammate of theirs on, a, on, a, on a, um, a team they played on had been injured, and they sarcastically said, why don't you just pray for me and, and, and heal me? Well, the person did in all earnesty pray for him. They didn't get anything. Well, you know what? People aren't going to receive if they're, if they're sarcastic or not wanting to receive or, or, or being belligerent about the things of God. Then he had a relative who was dying of cancer, but they were atheists. They didn't believe. They didn't believe. They didn't, they didn't even believe that God would, but he went and prayed for him and earnestly, and then nothing happened. And a few other situations like that in his family where people that they knew, he knew, didn't receive, but he was earnest. And, um, and then the Lord, you know, and I, and I didn't, right at that moment, you know, sometimes when people are talking to you, you're, um, you're not in a place to really take what they're saying and absorb it and give them a good answer back. But um, so I sat there for a little while. We just kind of chit-chatted back and forth. And then I, I, I was subbing at school is what I was doing. And, and about an hour and a half later, I, I was in between class. And, I, and while, I was, while he was uh, uh, in there, I was thinking on this. And I said, no, Lord, I want to help him. And he said, well, you know, Mark 6. So let's, let's go to Mark 6 tonight. Let's start there. And I, I want to talk about some things here. Because um, we, we know one thing we want to do is be what? Effective. Isn't that right? And we don't want to bring confusion. <coughs> Amen. To ourselves or to others. So sometimes, I mean, I'm going to use this term, but if we go off half cocked sometime, we get in trouble. You know, you can't, if your gun's half cocked, it won't work right. <laughs> I mean, you got you to you get, you get it fully cocked, all right? Hallelujah. But let's look here in Mark 6. We'll start here in the, um, the first verse. And it says, And he went out from thence and came into his own country. And his disciples followed him. And when, he, when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many, hear, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And wisdom, and what wisdom is this in which, uh, which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon, and are not, and are not his sisters here with us? And listen, and they were offended at him. Now, wait a second. They've heard about the works. This is who, he does these mighty works. They've heard about them. But they got to thinking about something else and went, well, isn't this, isn't this Mary's son? Isn't it the carpenter? And the Bible says they were offended at him. And let's go and read this. And Jesus said, uh, Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, among his own kin, and in his own house. And listen to this next verse. And he could there do no mighty work. Now stop. He could there do no mighty work. Did not say he wouldn't. Said he could not. What a, what a difference. Didn't see, say, it's sovereign will of God that, you know, something. And said he couldn't. Why could Jesus, now if anybody's anointed, it was Jesus. As a matter of fact, he made that declaration. 
Acts confirms the declaration of Jesus. Remember, over in Luke, the fourth chapter, Jesus came, you know, when he went into the wilderness and, came, and, and full of the Spirit, came out in the power of the Spirit, went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day as was his uh, custom, oh, and, and took the book of the, pro, of the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and opened it up and found the place where it's written and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. Amen? And one of the things was to heal the broken heart. And then Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with them. So we know Jesus was anointed. And let me say this. The Word of God also says he, was more, he, was, he, that he had the Spirit without measure. Nobody had more of the Holy Ghost and more of the anointing than Jesus. There's nobody walking on the face of the earth today ever in the history of man before, during, or after the ministry of Jesus that had more anointing or more of the Holy Ghost on their life than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Because the Bible says that the Father gave him the Spirit without measure. It means it was fully given to him. And then the inference there is you have it by measure. And amen, you don't have the, you, and for, for service and so forth, you have a measure of the anointing to do what you do. You don't have the full measure like Jesus. Now, the, let me say this. The entire body of Christ corporately does. But individually, you don't have the same measure. You don't have that full measure like Jesus. Now, some people will argue with that, but the Bible is only, only one, the only person in the Bible that said they had the spirit without measure is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now, I'm making a point here. So, if Jesus was offended at because of who he was, or because people got offended because of his personage, the spirit of familiarity in that place, and I'll be honest with you, sometimes, and a bunch of you probably found this out, the hardest people to minister to is your own family. You can walk out here and then lay hands on somebody and get them out of a wheelchair, go back to your family, and they got a headache, you can't get rid of it. Why? Because they remember you as little Benny. <laughs> I just choose a Benny. <laughs> That's little Benny, but he was a little boy. And he used to run and throw rocks through the windows. <laughs> they remember that. You know, here you come along, you're going to get them healed by playing hands on them. Uh, yeah, they, and they, they, oh, they're not so nice. And they, they, but see, they're offended. Amen? But the person in the wheelchair didn't know little Benny. Does that make sense? And see, Jesus said a prophet's not without, without honor except in his own country and among his own kin. Isn't that right? Isn't that what it says? And so, uh, and, 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 but the, the thing that's, that's astounding is he comes right back and says, and he could there do no mighty work. I mean, nobody got healed of a, you know, no legs grew out, no eyeballs popped open, no hearts were replaced, no, no leprosy was cleansed. Nothing major. I mean, no, big, no, no major miracles, no mighty work. Now, the Scripture said he couldn't, not he would. So it had nothing to do with the will of God. It had to do everything to do with there was something inhibiting the power of God from flowing. There was an inhibition to the flow of the power of God. And then it, it goes on and says this, He could there do no mighty work, save or accept. He laid his hand on a few sick folk. Now, if you read some different translations and go look it up in, in a concordance, it says sickly folk. Literally, he laid hands on some people with minor ailments. They had a couple of headaches and they had a couple of tummy aches and they got healed. <coughs> and healed them. Well, that, I'm glad they got healed, but there was so much offense that the mighty works wouldn't work wouldn't flow, wouldn't manifest. But listen to this, listen to this. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Stop there. Here he comes, they've heard of his mighty works. Isn't that right? But then they got to thinking about little, little Jesus, little Joshua, or actually we've been Yeshua to the, to the Jews, Little Yeshua running around town, and he, he worked with his daddy, and they made, you know, you know, he made that recliner in my living room. He helped put the addition on my house. And they still knew him as a carpenter. And they got offended at him. They heard all about this. He was over, he was over in Bethsaida and doing miracles. He was over in Judah doing miracles, but he came home, and they got offended when they heard about it because they knew who he was. Hello? 
And the, because of their offense, now let me say this, the most, now you, and you will understand that, I'm, I'm, I'm going um, to clarify my position on this so you just so you know. Yes, Jesus is the second person of the Godhead. He is divine. He is God. But when he came to earth, Philippians says he stripped himself of his rights to, now a little paraphrase here, little, to his rights to his deity and to his glory and walked among us as a man. In other words, when he took on the flesh, he walked as a man under the covenant. He did not use his deity, though he were divine. It was divine, is divine. Amen? He is divine, was divine. He was divine when he walked the earth, but he laid aside the right to access that and walked as a man anointed by the Holy Ghost. And we know that he was anointed without measure. No one's more anointed. I've got, I've said, I've got all nine gifts of the Spirit operating in my ministry. I'm I'll function in all five uh, ministry gifts and have all nine gifts of the Spirit working in my ministry. <laughs> the only person that did that was Jesus. I've heard people say, well, you know, the Lord showed me that, you know, the gifts of the Spirit, like, you know, like a tools in a toolbox. We have everyone you need, uh, you know. Well, God can use you in any, but I'm going to tell you, the propensity or the likelihood of it, it's not, it's not real big. And never, number one, you don't have them in the first place. They manifested the Spirit wills. So you don't have them. Hello? They may operate in your life, but you know, different ones may operate with more propensity and more regularity, but you don't have them. In other words, you just can't take them out and use them anytime you want to. Hello. They're, they're, they're manifest as the Spirit wills. Is that not true? Well, no, so let, let's go for it. Because I, I want to make sure you understand. Because so, some people, they just hear a little bit what you say. They'll run out and say, he's saying Jesus wasn't God. And that's not what I'm saying at all. Not even come, trying to come close to that, but you get, you get people, you get, the, you get the heresy hunters, and they're always looking for an opportunity to jump your case, just, just looking for you to say something a certain way so they can run out and say you said something wrong. Just waiting for you to make that mistake. Well, go talk to Dr. Phil. You need help. Anyway, Jesus had stripped himself of those things. He walked as a man, and he was anointed. According to Luke, he was anointed by the Holy Ghost. Acts 10, 38, we quoted earlier. He was anointed by the Spirit of God. And so here comes... The only person we have a biblical record of that had the spirit without measure. Hello? And he could there do no mighty work. Now let me say something. If Jesus couldn't, you ain't going to go above him. You're not going to be able to make things happen that he couldn't make happen. You can't override unbelief. The only thing that can get in operation and manifest and do stuff where people aren't necessarily believing is a manifestation of the gift of the Spirit, and that's a sovereign move of God, and you can't control that. Don't get them confused. Y'all hear y'all going home. Can we, can we pull the lights down just a little bit? For some reason, they just seem like, I don't know why, they seem excessively bright tonight. Good, that's good. Is that still okay for the camera, Bill? All right. Praise the Lord. I mean, really, in my eyes, for some reason, I don't know if they tilted or whatever. You know, Brother Hagin used to go, uh, turn the lights down. And, you know, turn the lights up. I, I can't hear you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pray. And I, honestly, you can't read the lips. <laughs> I understand. Glory to God. And so the Bible says Jesus could there do no mighty work except he laid his hand on a few sickly folk and healed them. And the Bible says next, and he marveled what? Because of their unbelief. Now, let me tell you some unbelief will stop things from happening for people. Now, if you're an atheist, it's going to be hard to get an atheist healed unless they'll, if you can get them to open up and say, you know what, I, I, I'm, I, I need a miracle. You know, if you, can get, if you can get them to open and give permission, as it were, and stop resisting, then you can get some things done for them. Sometimes. And, you know, now here's what Jesus did. The Bible says this, the next very next thing after he marveled about their unbelief, and he went round about their towns and villages teaching. You see, he realized that the way to combat the unbelief is to teach the truth. 
See, we think we're going to go in and lay hands on people a lot of times and get things done and because, because, you know, well, we lay hands on the sick and they recover. But, but understand, the people he said that to had, how, how can I say it, had a backdrop to understand that statement in. They had seen him do no mighty work in his hometown. They understood the parameters of which that statement is made. Hello? Remember, remember this? It said, it said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And these signs shall follow them. They just say these signs shall follow them that believe. If we go over to um, John's gospel, I believe it's John's gospel. Uh, make sure I'm in the right, right one here. Yeah, John's gospel, um, the fifth chapter. We have, we have where Jesus came by the bull of, uh, by the bull, by the bull of Bethesda, by the pool of Bethesda. <laughs> Don't you love it? We just get tongue-tied. The bull of Bethesda. I think mean, oh, I praise the Lord. We got a whole new Bible story. I like Medea's telling Bible stories up here. Anyway, <laughs> you know, the, the St. Louis Arch came up there. <laughs> Did y'all see that one? I can do bad all by myself. All right. Hallelujah. She, Medea's telling the Bible story. It's, it's so convoluted. How Tyler Perry can do that with a straight face and get it out, I don't know. Because he, I mean, this is hilarious. No, Jesus came by the, here, John 4, 5, John 5, verses 1 through 4. Jesus came to the pool of Bethesda. Now, and this is the place where there, there, there's, a, there's water there, and an angel would come down at a certain season and trouble the water, and the first person in would get healed. What, no matter what it was. It was just a, it was just a, how do we, well, we don't know how they knew that. It just was. It was a sovereign thing. It was a, it was a, it was a manifestation of God's mercy that was just, just, just there. And, so, and, he, and he, 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 Jesus said, will you be made whole? And the man said, sir, I have no one when the water is troubled to put me in because somebody always beats me in. Amen. I don't have anybody to help me out. And that wasn't his question. Now, in this case, I believe there was a manifestation of a gift of the Spirit. He said, rise, take up your bed and walk. And he, he, he got up and walked. <coughs> Jesus didn't. If you'll go study, there's, a, there's people all over the place there. They're all waiting for that water to trouble. And he walked off and didn't minister to anybody else we have a record of. Why? I don't know. But I can tell you that not everybody in that place got healed that day. And it, it wasn't that Jesus couldn't have ministered to them, but he would have had to minister to them. And, and really, you kind of get, get a mindset of what was going on there. This man, this man, the first answer out of his mouth, I don't have anybody to get me in the water. I can't get in the water. Somebody beats me in every time. They're all with the same mindset. You'll get people who get so locked into something. Hello? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I've been in meetings. Sorry, Brother Bill. I guess stepped out of the light. I need to be in the light. Does it have that nice glow around my head? Hallelujah. All right. I've been in meetings, and, and, and Dad Hagen would do this. See, people would come to get healed by Brother Hagen. Y'all hear? They would get so caught up with Brother Hagen. And Brother Hagen, listen, I'm going to tell you something. He, he, he understood this. If, if, you, if you're tired... You can't function with the anointing like you would normally be able to. And, and one time, it almost cost him his life. He promised the Lord, he said, Lord, I'll never push my body that hard again. And he, he, would, I mean, he would get to a certain place. If there's a lot of ministry going on, he would get to a certain place. And, and, and if, he, if he got to that place, he just knew he was too tired. He'd quit and sit down. Say, I said, I can't go any further. Well, I've been in meetings where, you know, he would call, maybe somebody from the ring or singers and band would be there. He would call somebody over. I mean, uh, sometimes Annie and sometimes, uh, you know, other people. And, and he, 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 they'd come up and say, here, come here, come here, come here, come here. And put his finger in the palm of their hand. And, and the healing anointing would be transferred. And they'd go start ministry. But I see people get, just almost turn around and walk off the line. You could see it in their expression. Well, I didn't come for them. I come for Brother Hagin to pray for me. See? Their mind was wrong. They weren't looking to the Lord. They weren't looking to the, to the Father. They were looking to a man. And I tell you, and see, you get these people down here, just like this man, I had nobody get me. Will you be made whole? Well, I don't have anybody put me in the water, man. They were looking to the water, and they weren't looking to God. So he had a manifestation. But Jesus didn't minister to anybody else there. 
Now, I'm not saying that it's not God's will to heal everybody. It is God's will to heal everybody. And God anoints people to minister. And he, we, we, we can lay hands on sick and have them recover. But there's going to have to be, this is what I'm after tonight, there's going to have to be a cooperation on the receiving end. See, we think we, think we can just go and, and, and push it off on people if they're resisting it. You can't. You can't make them get up. You know, if, if that were true, Jesus would have showed up there and pulled the Bethesda and just walked around and just laid hands on everybody. They'd all got up and walked off all healed. Same thing over at Solomon's porch. Hello? He just healed, you know, he just, he just gone into wherever the infirmary was, the hospital was. He would have gone down to the leprosy camp and prayed for all of them, got them all healed. He didn't go to the leprosy camp. Now, he had 10 lepers come to him. They got healed. But he didn't go down to the leprosy encampment. There has to be, I, I, um, you know, I tell the story a lot, but it, it's so relative. A number of years ago, I, mean, I guess it's been 15 years or plus, somebody at church wanted to go visit a relative. We went, uh, and, and, we, and Alan was with me at that time. And so we went over to the hospital together and went in. And we were going we to try to minister to this lady. I mean, she, need, she needed ministry. She was in the hospital. We couldn't get her to look at us. I mean, there's a television on the back wall. And she wasn't even really courteous about it. You, you try to talk to her, and if you stepped over here, she'd dodge around to keep watching the television. Well, it's hard to pray for people that they're more concerned about what's going on as the, as the stomach churns <laughs> and on the edge of death or whatever than they are about getting healed. You're trying to minister to them, try to share the truth with them, share the, share the you know, and, they're, and, and everything, yeah, uh-huh, they just give you the courtesy, uh-huh, while they look around you. <laughs> Hello? And I'm going to, we prayed for her. But you know what I could have said? You know, you ugly and alligator's going to eat you, amen, and walk out, no, she wouldn't even know what I said. <laughs> and that might have come to pass better than what I did pray. Well, no anointing. No reception, nothing. I mean, I mean, you, you ever laid hands on somebody? You may as well stuck your hand in a in a, in a bucket of what's that? That stuff that you see, you know, that kind of gooey, uh, that goopy stuff that you can stick your hand in, and uh, huh? No, it's a, it's a, no, it wasn't silly, but it was it was it was a toy, but it was a, it was like a, a ball of goo, huh? Gack, okay. Whatever it was, you kind of, it kind of was, you kind of squeezy, but it would stay, it would, ma it would maintain its um, consistency. It would, you, would, you couldn't tear, you know, you, and it would squeeze through your fingers. Hey, you may as well lay your hands on that. That's about how it felt. Lovely feeling. No anointing. Why? Because you know you, you're you're prepared. You're come, you're come to help. You come to minister. You come to bring life. You come to bring the spirit of God. You could, came to bring the healing anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ to their to their knee and to their bedside, and they resist it. Now I don't. I, you know some people think, well, I bless God, I'll get them healed. You can't get can't get people healed if they don't want to be. Y'all here? You go home. Well, this is a healing rally. Yeah. See, I'm trying to teach you to understand. You've got to get some reception going on. And when you're going to people, give them things that will help them get, get to where they're receiving. This is a prayer call. Well, give them the scripture for it. Give them testimonies. I'll tell you, it's amazing how many times if you can get people to open up, say, you know what? I, I believe the Lord's good. You know, and if you can get them over there where they open up to you, you can get things done for them. But if they're resistant to it, you got relatives who are atheists, don't even believe what you're doing. Well, go ahead, I see if it works. Well, that, well, it's not going to. Unless there's a manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, it's not going to. You can't force. No more than you can force people to get saved. You can't force healing on them. And so, you know, I, I want you to understand that, you know, Mark 16 was said in light or in the, within the parameter of what those disciples had seen in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. The people he prayed for, that they came in faith or they came and opened up to him, got healed. Those who resisted it didn't get anything. His own kinfolk, he could there do no mighty work. Now let's think about another story. And I say story, but you know, account. We use the word story a lot of times. And then when we're growing up, we don't tell lies, we tell stories. Because you know, people don't like to use the word. I don't know what's wrong with that. If it's a lie, it's a lie. I don't know why we teach our kids, no, we don't use that word. If it's a lie, it's a lie. 
If it's a purposeful deception and it's not the truth, it's a lie. And they told a story. No, they didn't tell a story. They told a lie. Why don't we train our children that way? Oh, and don't come tell me because you're tattling. I mean, if somebody comes to you every 20 seconds telling you somebody did something wrong, okay. But if they're doing something that's, that's wrong, you know, they're burn, trying to burn the house down, it's not tattling to go tell. Sheesh. We train our children wrong. We, we parents train children not to bring pertinent information to adults by calling them tattletales. Can anybody do the Jeopardy thing real quick? Do, 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 do. Anyway. But we have, we have this account in the, in the Word of God where Jesus went into a house and there were Pharisees and lawyers and doctors of the law from every town round about. And here's what the Bible says in that passage. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And he got to teaching and sharing stuff. And uh, they brought, they, these, these guys heard that Jesus was around. They brought a guy on a stretcher up, got to the house, and couldn't get in because there's so many people in there outside. I mean, you're looking in the windows. It's just, you can't even get in the house. They climb up on the roof, tear the roof apart, and drop the guy down in there in front of Jesus. Really interesting. I don't have the record. I didn't have that in my, my notes for tonight. So if you know where it is right off, we can go there. But he said this, And when he saw their faith... He said to the man that was on the stretcher, thy sins be forgiven thee. Boy, that stirred up some trouble. And they start questioning among themselves, who can forgive sins except God alone? Hello? I mean, they start going after, who can forgive sins but God alone? Who is this that he forgives sins? Only God can forgive sins. And he, when he, he, did, he, did, he turns around and looks at him because he's, he's flowing in the Holy Ghost. Why reason ye in your hearts? And said this, whether I can forgive sins or heal the sick. He said, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He saith unto the, to the lame man, he said, rise, take up thy bed and walk. In other words, he demonstrated, <coughs> there's, 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 there's more depth here. The power of God that heals the sick is the same power of God that saves the heart. It's the same sacrifice. He saith to him, okay, Mark 2. Take, uh, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately he received strength and, and, and began to walk. And you know what? They got offended. I said, they got offended. Hallelujah. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, it's like somebody took the sugar off their sugar frosted flakes. <laughs> Amen. Are you here? And immediately he arose, took up the bed, went forth before them, and so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We've never seen anything in this fashion. Verse 11, verse 12 of chapter 2, Mark. And they went forth again by the sea. And listen, and nothing happened. Let me say this. The Bible says back up here in, um, oh, is this a different account? Okay, the other account of this story is more in depth. Um, says the power of the Lord was present to heal them. None of them got healed. All the people in the room when that, when that was stated, none of them got healed. Why? The same reason that when people came and touched Jesus, none of them got healed until a woman, woman came by with an issue of blood who, who said and kept on saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. So they were, he was being, listen, touching Jesus didn't get the job done. Think about it. Here uh, in Mark, if we can find the other passage of it, uh, huh? Luke 5. Okay, Luke 5. And he says there, the power of the Lord was present to heal them, and none of them got healed. So let's, let's look at Luke 5, because I, I, I think there's a little bit more clarity there in Luke than there is in Mark. Understand who they're writing to. Mark was writing to heathens. They didn't care about all the details. Hello? Verse 17 says, came to pass on a certain day he was teaching. There were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by. They were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And then he goes on and talks about how he forgave the sins. And, they got, and um, 
you know, they began to reason. Jesus said in verse 22, why reason you in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins be forgiven, or you rise up, take up your bed, and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He saith unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, rise, take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he arose up before them, took up his where, whereon he lay, and departed into his own house, glorifying God. And um, listen to this. And they were all amazed. They glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we've seen strange things today. And that's it. Man, if I was sick and I was there, I'd be going, man, you would th at least you would think so. But see, they were so caught up. They were so caught up with when he said, your sins be forgiven you, they got offended. There are people right now who get offended because somebody said, says, I'm anointed to heal the sick. I'm going to lay hands on the sick and get them healed. And they get offended at them. They write books about why they're not of God, why they're a cult. Healing's passed away, you know? How that God wants you to suffer with disease. And these healing preachers are of the devil. Well, according to Acts 10, 38, healing's of God. The Bible says that how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Healing's good. I say healing is good. It's not bad. Hello. And so they get filled with fear. They get, they, they're going, oh man, I've, seen, I've never seen anything like this before. And they get too busy thinking about it and wondering about it and nothing happens for them. They all just take off and go home. And, and the, but the Bible, listen, I don't believe there was a house full of non-sick folk because the Bible went to, why did God have Luke put that in there unless there was a reason for us to know this? The power of the Lord was present to heal them, but none of them got healed. It didn't say the power of the Lord was present and healed them. It said it was present to heal them. And we have no account of any of those people getting healed. The guy that got healed is the one that came in later and got dropped down through the roof. Now, the woman with the issue of blood. Think about this now. Jesus is walking through a crowd of people. People are touching him all over the place. I mean, got the Elvis thing going on. How? Oh, I'll never wash my hands again. You know, the stardom thing going on. You know? Oh, I touched the celebrity. Honey, you're going to have to wash that hand eventually if you don't that hand goes to some nasty places at times you're going to have to wash that hand the people touching Jesus the same way they do they touch celebrities today I mean if they can touch and it don't matter who the celebrity is people get groupy eyed you know some celebrity comes by and they get to shake their hand or whatever oh it's a celebrity I'm never going to wash my hand oh I've touched the celebrity well this is what's going on with Jesus the, you know we have Jesus going through crowds and the Bible says that you know that he was as he's passing the crowd the multitude you know he, he's going through a, a press of the crowd and it says this that this woman had, had issue of blood 12 years suffered many things of many physicians and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she heard of Jesus she said well actually the Bible says she came in the press behind him and touched the hem of his garment for she she said, if I can touch him, I shall be whole. Now, the Greek says, she said and kept on saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. Now, she came in the press. She came in the press. There were so many people there. She had to get down and crawl in. But the only thing she was saying, if I can touch him, I'll be whole. Now, as soon as she touched the hem of his garment, the Bible tells us this, and immediately Jesus, knowing himself that virtue had went out, about, went out of him, turned about the press and said, who touched me? Why didn't other people, why, why was it all them other people were touching him, running into him, bumping into him, nothing was happening? Because the, the touch of curiosity, the touch of inquisitiveness doesn't get the job done. Coming to a, a healing service or being inquisitive, you know, or, or making statements like, well, go ahead and lay hands on me and see if it works. Well, that, that, you know, that, you may as well sing, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Hello? And let me say this to those of you who, who are trying to minister, who, who have a desire to minister to people. If you're ministering to people who aren't at least open to what you're doing, I mean genuinely open, I don't mean mocking you or sarcastically, you're not going to get the job done. Jesus didn't, you're not. Jesus didn't, you're not. If Jesus can't, you can't. 
Hello? Now, on our end, since we understand this, then we need to be receptive. Hello? I said, hello? No matter how weird they act. I mean, they might be weird. You know, some preachers get, you get God, God uses strange people. Yes, sir, God will use strange people. He uses me. I, under, I can understand the, 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 the whole premise here. All right? But you know, we, we can't get caught up with all this. We have to be under, looking to God, looking to the anointing, and, and be open. Now, don't bother coming down to, and asking somebody to pray for you if you're just going to see if it'll work. Well, I'll give this a shot. That's not like going out and saying, I'm going to take a bud. I'm going to go drink me a long neck bud and see if that works. See if that helps. <laughs> well, kind of took the edge off a little while, but I'm, I'm still messed up. Well, you're going to stay messed up. Hello? So we have here, we, we have, um, we have Jesus unable. Let's, let me say, he couldn't, didn't say. Listen, if Jesus could have healed them and overrode their unbelief, he would have. The Bible did not say he wouldn't said he couldn't. And then he marveled because of their unbelief. And then the next thing he said is that he went round about the villages, the towns and villages, teaching. So here's the, now, I, I'm making this point because you understand that just because it didn't work this time, listen, and the reason it didn't work, there wasn't all the, all the things weren't in place to, for it to work. There is a, there is a, um, there is a way to fix it. You can teach them and get them over in the faith, you can get the job done. Amen? But unless you can do that, you're not going to get the job done. If they're offended, if they reject, if they resist, you're not going to be able to force anything you've got. I've prayed for people, and the anointing of God is so strong, it's about knocking people back into the third row, and you, and you go down and somebody lay hands on them, and it's like it, like it, it bounces off them like a, like a basketball off a wall. I mean, you can feel it go out of your hand and come right back in. You try to talk, no, 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 no. Get, get, get your head shut down. Let the anointing flow into you. And, and boom, boom. If you can't, you sometimes you just go and leave them there because they're, they're resisting. You can't get the job done. Well, what if they don't get healed? They probably won't. Probably didn't. Why? They resisted the anointing. They were just trying out to see if it would work. The Bible doesn't teach us to come and try. It says come in faith. All things are possible to him that believeth, not that trieth. Amen. Isn't that right? I said, isn't that right? And so we have to, we have to you know, uh, understand. Okay, it was Luke 5. That's what that was in my notes. I just, <laughs> I guess I could have picked up my notes. Hallelujah. Um, if we understand this, it's going to help us minister to people more effectively. Because you're not going to go try to shove it down somebody if they're resistant. You just can't run up to the hospital and go lay hands on everybody and get them and raise them and, and empty out the hospital wards. I, I've heard people think they could do that. Hello. Or somebody mockingly says, well, if you really can heal the sick, then go empty out the hospitals. But see, see that, that, that's that mock. And then, then that's used by the devil to try to get people to do stuff and, and, and put, put them into a corner where they're not operating according to the scriptures, number one. And they try to go do stuff that brings dis, uh, disgrace or uh, brings reproach on the things of God because they're, they're trying to prove I've got something. Listen, don't you let the devil use people to make you go contrary to the word. Yeah. Trying to prove, you ain't got to prove anything. God didn't call you to prove that you've got, you're anointed. Just let the anointing work. And when it works, it works. I'm going to tell you something. When, when people are open and receptive, it's the easiest thing in the world to get and minister to them. But if they're not, and, and see, as we grow and we learn and we mature in the things of God, you'll come to understand that there are people who are resistant and, and aren't interested in changing and aren't interested in hearing what you've got to say. And you know what you've got to I mean, I, I was listening to Dad Hagen that other day. I was on the way, I had, had him in my head on the way home. Had, had earphones in listening to Dad Hagen. And uh, he was teaching on, he was talking about, uh, i trying to remember exactly what the, I don't remember what the sermon title was, um, but he was talking about he was in a prayer line, and he's coming down the line, and, um, you know, uh, 
And there'd been these people, these people come into the church. They were, they were in a full gospel business. I mean, a full, not a full gospel businessman, but a full gospel church ministering. And people were coming into the meeting and they were getting healed. And, and the way he got them healed, he would, he would, he'd read scripture to them. And there's one couple that this woman had been, had been sick for some, for a little while. And, and they were, they were praying. Now we just pray that if it's Lord's will to heal, that he'll, he'll, he'll show us how he'll give us the faith to be able to receive. And he said, well, now look, if I could prove to you it was God's will for you to be healed, um, uh, would you believe that? He said, oh, is that sure? And he read the scripture where himself, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses and so forth. And they went, and, and the husband looked at him and said, we're going to have to throw our prayer out the door, aren't we? Because our prayer is not working. We're asking if it is God's will, then give us the faith to believe it. But it is his will. And the, and, and the wife, she read it. She said, well, that settles it then. Amen. I'm the healer of the Lord. So he laid hands on her. She walked away. His husband had brought her in and brought her, took her back out. But two days later, she walked in under her own power, completely healed. Now, a few days later, another week, I, long meetings, now, this one of the women, women in the church came in, came in and, and um, came up to him and said, I want you to tell me one thing. Oh, here we go. How come God to heal that Methodist woman? And here I am uh, in this church. I'm a member of this church. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking tongues, and he won't heal me. And he said, well, he's, he's he back it up, and he starts, he starts sharing with her and she's giving him the same scriptures. And here's what she says. Well, I'll just tell you what I believe. Well, here we go. I believe that in his own good time, he's going to heal me. And Brother Hayden just looked at her and said, well, he won't. <laughs> I think sometimes we need to be bold. Now listen, he won't. <clears throat> Came back five, she'd been in that state for five years. It wasn't something major, but it was something that, that would shorten her life over time eventually. But came back five years later, she got still getting in the prayer line. Nothing. Fifteen years. Nothing. Twenty-five years he'd been coming and going to that city to different churches, and, and she'd come every time and get in the healing line. Because she, what she believed, see? Now, how come God healed that Methodist woman? Because she just took the Word of God at face value and said, that's right, that's the Word, the word of God. This woman said, well, I'll tell you what I believe. No matter, it didn't matter what the Word said. You can't, and see, well, he couldn't get her healed. No, it had nothing to do with him not getting her healed. She wouldn't receive. Because she made a decision that what she believed was m more important than what the Word of God said. I'll tell you what I believe. It doesn't, listen, okay, now I'm, I'm going to, you know, I, I want to kind of be kind about this. It only matters what you believe if we can change it to what the Bible says. If what you believe is contrary to the Bible and you're going to hold on to that, you're irrelevant. We're not going to, you're not going to receive. Now, if you tell me what you believe and I say, okay, but the Bible says this and you make correction, great. Then what you're telling me helped us make a correction in your life. That's great. But if you're telling me and you're, you're staking out your claim and that's just the way it's going to be, well, this is what I believe and you can't tell me no different. Well, It's like coming to the pastor and saying, the Lord told me to stop doing such and such. Well, what am I supposed to tell you? Even if I know you're not supposed to stop doing such and such, what am I going to tell you? You just told me the Lord told you. My only option is to call you a liar. Hello? The Lord told me. What do you think? Well, can I ask you a question? If the Lord told you, why are you asking me what I think? Honestly, it's irrelevant what I think if the Lord told you. Hello? The problem is 90% of the time they tell you the Lord told you, the, 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 the Lord told them, the Lord didn't tell them. Hello? I mean, they had too much, you know, uh, uh, toaster strudels or something, pizza dreams. <coughs> Like that girl called me one time and wanted me to uh, confirm her dream that God showed her she was going to marry some deacon in her church, but she couldn't go talk to her pastor about it. And it took me 10 minutes, but I finally got to the information out of her. The reason she couldn't go talk to her pastor about it, and the reason it won't work out was because he was married. Yeah, he was married. <laughs> you think I'm joking. But before it came out, before I had time to think it and stop my mouth, it had come out. Sister, you had too much pizza the night before you had that dream. That was an indigestion dream. 
What do you mean? God's not going to tell you you're going to get another man, another wife's man. Hello. The Lord told me. Oh, well, see, we stake out claims. The people will stake out claims on doctrine or on what they believe about something. Now, we had, we had somebody we tried to minister to for a couple of years. He came to church, visited the church every once in a while. He, he'd just get mad because I, I wouldn't let him do certain things in the church. He'd come sit in my office and cuss. My neighborhood. Yeah. And he'd go, pardon my French. Well, it ain't French. I understood that. <laughs> that won't French. <laughs> Hello. He wanted to do this, wanted to do that, and, and but, but I, listen, you don't need to be doing. I need you need to let me help you. So I kept telling him, you need to let me help you. You don't need to be in here trying to do be be in this department or that department and serving in this ministry and going out and doing this. You need to come in here and let me help you. I can get you well if you let me help you. Got mad. Didn't have nice things to say about me either. Hello? What's that, honey? Wrote me a letter, didn't he? Nasty letter. And all I, this all, I, all I kept doing was saying, no, look, you, you don't need, what you need is you need to come hear what I got to say. You need, and I kept telling him that. I went into his home and sat down with him when, and, 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 and when he was in, in, in different suicidal states and said, listen, I can help you, but I, you, you have to do what I say for me to help you. And he wouldn't do it. I couldn't help him. I said, I could not help him because he had it all figured out in his head and he wouldn't receive what I had to say. He had it all figured out how he wanted it to work. Stood right here when, when uh, uh, Bruce and Sidney Black were here and they ministered to him and the anointing of God was so strong and he, he was touched by that. But I'm telling you, you can get touched by the anointing and your mind get in the way and lose it. This is, the, this is important, folks. This is important. If we're going to be effective in administering to the sick, and if we're going to be effective in receiving things from God, we're going to have to understand that the faith or the, the openness of the receiver is equally as important as the anointing on the deliverer. You understand what the person bringing it? The vessel of the anointing. I'm just trying to find the right term. Um, and don't, don't, get, don't, don't go get weird. We're, we, I'm not the deliverer. Jesus is the deliverer. Okay, okay, okay. Go, go save your Mickey Mouse bog for somebody who cares. Hello. You know, they'll, they'll try to catch you in a, in a semantic term uh, so, and, and so they, can, they can hook you on it. I don't care. You know, go, go talk to your, 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 your evil, don't want anybody to have anything, people that rejoice when people die because they, they taught healing and they died. You go, go talk to them. I don't care what you had to say. I'm trying to help people who want to learn and want to grow and want to help people. I can tell you, you can't help those who resist you. Now, on our end, on your end, on the receiving end, that means you've got to come prepared to receive. Don't ever come to a prayer line going, well, I'll just see if it works. You go start uh, pushing buttons and pulling levers on stuff, you'll blow it up. Hello? If you go to you go to go to some kind of equipment and you start pulling levers down and pushing buttons, you blow something up. Hello, we have to get to where we understand that the, that there is a connection between the anointing, or there 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 is a, there is a there are prop, there are spiritual laws between the anointing and receiving that anointing. The woman with the issue of blood is the only person in that crowd that we know of that touched Jesus and received from that anointing that was resident within him. Now, we know it was there because when she touched him, he felt virtue go out of him. It was there already. I said, it was already there. Well, then why weren't other people getting it? And you remember, the, but the disciples said this. He turned about to the press and said, who touched me? And Peter and the disciples, oh, they, they, you're talking about a spiritual bunch. Master, you see the multitude thronging you, and why are you asking us who touched you? And here's the implication. 
You know, you gotta be thinking, you gotta be thinking, these guys get so carnal, like, man, did he not get enough rest last night? Lord, here, here, let me just tell you, everybody's touching you. That's, that's the inference there. And, and <laughs> you can almost see Jesus. Like, I understand Moses now. And just kind of looking around. And, but he said he looked around to see her that had done this thing. And she came before him fearing and trembling and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Hallelujah. <laughs> of course, the disciples probably felt about that tall afterwards. Because then they got, oh, oh, that touch. Okay. Got it. Next time, wait before you talk, Peter. Okay, okay, okay. If we just wait a couple minutes, it'd been better. But no, Peter, you had to go stick your foot in your mouth to make us all look like fools. Can you imagine some of the conversations that went on behind the scenes in that group? Matthew's probably thinking, man, if this thing don't work out, I'm double taxing you guys. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just being silly now. Praise the Lord. All right. If you need ministry by laying, on, by, by laying on hands and you're ready, come on up. We'll pray for you. If you have prayer calls, go ahead and bring them up. We're going to minister to you. Hallelujah.